Hey guys, uh, so I just wanted to offer a little video that uh, kind of goes back over the ideas that we discussed in the first class um, with the first notebook. So in this notebook we introduced it, just some of the basics of Jupiter. Um, we did a little bit of data work using both pandas and Seaborn. The things that you want to have around you when looking at this um, are going to be the pandas cheat sheet, a markdown cheat sheet, and maybe the Seaborn tutorials and documentation. So um, I'm just going to go through the actual code. You can go ahead and read and um, look at your notes from class for the rest of the stuff. To begin, we imported the libraries. Again, these are the things that have the uh, special functions that we want. Like, for example, matplotlib is a plotting library. NumPy is the numerics library. Pandas is our data uh, structure library. And Seaborn is our data visualization library. So we, we load those first because we're going to be using them all. And then the, these examples were meant to show how to both call a function, for example, to find the cosine of 10 using NumPy's cosine function. We imported NumPy as NP and we're using the cosine function uh, from it. We can look at the help documentation for, um, for the cosine method here from NumPy uh, by just typing a question mark afterwards and we see the help documentation come up and it has some examples and so on. But this will be the case for any uh, for all these libraries that if we if there's something that we have a question about we can um, we can just use the question mark in Jupyter and it will display the help. Next thing we did was loaded some data that came with the Seaborn package. So one of the data sets is this is a data set called tips. We're loading that here and saving it as a variable named tips. If we want to save that data as a file on our computer then we did the tips to CSV and we saved it in a folder that we called data as a file called tip CSV and if we go into that folder we see here this is this is my regular folder it's got a sub uh, directory called data and in that is this file tips.csv next is okay well what is this thing so it's a pandas data frame what does it look like well here's a way to take a uh, take a peek at the first five rows of a data frame it's by typing the name of that data frame so this data frame we name tips we say dot head and it will show us the first five rows we can see that it has these different columns total bill tip sex smoker day time size etc um, if we want to start chopping this up, looking at individual pieces to pull a column. Um, for example, if I just want this first column of total bill, then I write tips uh, and in brackets and quotes the, the title of the column, total bill. So you see that this gives us that just those values from that column. Um, there's quite a few of them though so if I wanted to just look at the first five of them again I would write my command to pull that column and then just follow that with dot head and that shows me just the first five of this similarly if I wanted to do other things to that co to columns like find the average tip well then I could just say tips and from the tip column and apply the mean method to that and it tells me what the average tip was I can, there's a bunch of other functions that I can use here. Me, for example, median, mode. Um, I can look at how many different unique values there are in a column. But what I hope that you see is rather than remembering what these methods are, is the way that they're applied to the objects. Okay, we have this thing, this column, and we apply the method to it uh, here. Uh, another method that's uh, very helpful is um, is to group variables. So here, what this is going to do is this is going to group the data set based on some sort of category. If we look back at the data, we notice that we have a few categorical data types. The sex is, these are words, female or male, smoker, day, and time. All of those are categorical. They don't have numbers in them. So we could group by the different values within each of these 
and look at something from uh, within those grouped categories. To do that, we use the group by method. So for example, to group things by sex. And if you look at this, it doesn't really look any different. Um, but it's a grouped by object that has some other attributes. For example, if we want to look at the first group, well, we notice that, okay, uh, there is the male and the female counterparts of that first group. In other words, here's your first, this was the first female entry in that column, and here's the first male. And then I can do similar things, uh, like maybe if I wanted to look at the smokers and see the first, uh, the last, I could find the sum of these. I could find the mean of these. Okay, But what this is doing is it's applying these methods to the, each of the groups, um, at the, the categories within the group of sex. Totally. So what we see here is we see that the, the average male's bill was $20.74. The average female's was 18 and 5 cents. The tip amount and the size of the party. Okay, the averages for each of these categories within sex. So some other things that we might want to do um, here is, again, like what does this do? This would create a variable name size. This is one of the exercises that we looked at to select a column. Uh, so to select the size column, it's tips bracket quote size. Um, I can look at the first five rows of that. To select rows, we had two different ways of doing that using the uh, iLock and the lock methods. So the difference between these was that one of them was an index-based method, this iLock. Uh, index-based means a numeric location. So if we do iLock from 4 to 10, this shows me not including the 10th, but the starting at 4 up till the 10th row. If instead I want to use the lock method, then I have to specify a, a value uh, rather than a location for columns. So for example, if I instead wanted to select just the rows for uh, smokers, then I would use tips.lock and I'm saying, okay, where, well, from this column, just give me the entries that are yes. And if I wanted to change some methods onto that, so then there's a, a mean. And here we go. Here are, here's the average uh, values for smokers, uh, bills, tips, and size of parties. Some other methods, the pivot method, which would take and split. Um, so for example, the smokers, it would create columns out of each of the, uh, the unique values and smoker. Um, and then here I'm just pulling the tip values from that. So if I break this into smoker yes or no and just pull the tips and use the describe method on that, we see that the yes and no smokers, um, how many there were, the average, the standard deviation of their tips, the minimum, uh, maximum, and the quartiles. Ooh we could describe the entire data frame, right? This is a nice uh, method, gives us a good uh, feel for the distribution of the data. And we can do that for every uh, variable in there by just applying it to the whole data set also. Uh, Tips.describe, and you see that we get, just for the quantitative variables that we discussed, uh, right? It doesn't tell me how, it doesn't tell me the averages um, for the categorical variables. Finally, what we wanted to do was to visualize some of the data. So um, we're using Seaborn here to call Seaborn. We had imported the Seaborn library as, and abbreviated it with SNS. And then we will be plotting um, some of the data from our TIPS data set. So to create a distribution plot of just the TIP values here, what we can do is just uh, SNS.displot we're telling it go into this tips data and just pull this column uh, tip. And here we see the distribution of the tips. If we wanted to create a distribution plot for the tips based on um, male or female 
uh, customers, then we can we can use the uh, slicing methods that we saw before, where we locate based on the gender. Um, so I'm going to say tips.lock um, equals male, and then I'm just going to take these variables, sex and tip, and similarly I'm going to create a variable named female, go into that tips data set, grab just the uh, people who are labeled females, and create and just pull the sex and tip columns from that. And you see if I, if I now look at the male, the head of the male variable, right, it just has two columns, sex and tip, and the only guys in the sex column are males in this example. So to create a distribution plot of both of these on the same set of axes, we just call two distribution plots in the same cell. And here we go. The females being the orange, the males being the blue. Another kind of plot is a box plot, similar structure, but now we're kind of using two variables. We're breaking apart um, this tip distribution based on whether or not people were smokers. And I'm calling it a little bit differently now too. Instead of saying x equals, I could have written here uh, tip tips and uh, put in brackets and put smoker inside of it. But we could also just say x equals and name the name of the column, uh, name the name of the column, and in a separate place, tell it what the name of the data set is that we're pulling these from. Because I would have to write tips both here and here. So it eliminates some of the redundancy. And here we see that it broke, it gave me two box plots, one for uh, smokers, one for non-smokers. And this is saying the distribution of the tip values from each of those. We can break this apart a little bit more. Let's suppose that we uh, group the smokers, uh, we group the tip value by uh, smokers and look at the description of that. Okay, maybe I want that. Um, one way that I can reorient this table, I think it would be maybe a little bit better if I had it vertically like we're used to, I can use the transpose method. So at the end of this, if I just put a dot capital T, what that will do is change the row into column. Same information, maybe just a little bit easier to read for us. So there were 93 smokers, there were 151 non-smokers. The average tips were fairly close. Doesn't seem to be a very big distinguisher. Um, we can break these plots apart even further by other categories, which we did here. So we have across the x-axis is going to be the day, which is a category. The y-axis is going to be a total bill, so that's a, that's a numerical distribution. But within each of these, we can break it apart by a category again. So if we say this variable hue equals sex, then what it will do is on each day it breaks apart the total bill into male and female groups. Similarly, we could do that for the smokers, right? Those are also categorical variables. And finally, a factor plot um, will create different plots for each uh, of the unique values of the factor. So for this example, if we enter uh, the sex is going to be on the x-axis, the y value is going to be the total bill, it's going to break that part uh, into pieces by smokers, but then it's going to create columns based on the time, right? Time was another categorical variable. There were lunch and dinner values for the time. So if we say the column equals time, we get two graphs, one of them comparing the distribution of total bills by gender at lunchtime, one of them comparing the distribution of uh, to uh, of total bill by gender at uh, dinner time, and also just sh comparing the smoker categories within each group. So a lot of ways to break apart the data and get a feel for what's happening with it with these visualizations, and that's what we want to get used to is um, is using these visualizations to understand where there are differences and similarities within the data. Here we had a couple of other kinds of uh, uh, we had a couple other data sets to play with. Just a few examples of um, the iris data set. So again, this is measurements of parts of flowers, different species. Uh, we could create a box plot of this 
and make it horizontal and what it will do is it just broke this apart based on the category and gave us a, a box plot for every numeric value here. Right? It, just, it just created a box, there's nothing here for species. Um, a variation on the box plot is a violin plot. So if I create a violin plot for uh, here we break it apart by the species and we show the distribution of the sepal lengths within the species here. What you see is that you basically have a distribution plot standing up on a box plot. It's showing you how a distribution these values are distributed within this. So just another nice kind of plot. Similarly, we had the Titanic data set uh, that we could load. Look at the head. This has a bunch of information about survivors uh, or people who did not survive, passengers, I guess, people who both survived and didn't survive the Titanic. Um, a bar plot, single variable, right, but broken apart. Again, like what this shows us is the distribution of males and females, the counts of them in uh, each of the different classes. So you can see that there were many more uh, female survivors uh, than male survivors, and that the, regardless, the people who survived the most in each of them were the first class passengers, then the second class passengers, and then the third class passengers. Uh, a very similar kind of plot would be a count plot, and here what this shows me is just um, how many values were in, how many unique values for, were in this variable deck. In other words, that there are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G entries. There are around 15 uh, that were on deck A, 45 for B, and so on. This is showing you, this is just counting the unique values of the, uh, of the different variables within that Titanic data set. So uh, a bunch of different ways to kind of start digging into our data with visualizations using Seaborn and Pandas. Uh, feel free to leave any questions um, either on our Slack channel or, uh, or in the video or anywhere else. Um, great.